On The Build Show today, we're talking stucco. I'm gonna show you two old houses, one that worked perfectly for the last 80 years, and one that's an abject failure. Let's get going. Okay, so we're talking stucco today, and I wanna show you two old houses that I've remodeled in the past and show you how those stucco houses worked. One of them worked fine for many years, and one of them was a massive failure. Now, one of the things that I love about doing remodels is I get to learn things. I love this quote from Albert Einstein. Learning and remodeling go hand in hand, and those things have made me a better new construction builder. So first, let's look at this house right here. This is a, a pretty famous house here in Austin, Texas. Just had its 80th birthday or so. Um, this house, pretty, uh, pretty modern construction, even though it's 80 years old. Uh, no overhangs, some really interesting architecture going on. Uh, kind of an art deco house. But interestingly enough, doesn't look all that different from some real modern brand new construction houses. This is traditional three quarter inch stucco. No overhangs really to speak of on this house. You can see that, that uh, wall goes all the way up and then transitions to a flat roof. Here's the back of the house. And as I walked around the house for the very first time, I took these photos and I was trying to note on the outside what um, might be some problems to see on the inside because we, we got there a little early for this meeting with this client. And some of the things we noticed were things like this. On the outside, we saw a lot of decay at the windows. It had these um, steel windows that were original to the house, so 80 years old. Hadn't been well maintained in the last 10 or 15, maybe 20 years. It had been basically vacant. So we saw a lot of rust at the windows. But other than that, not a whole lot of kind of visible damage. The stucco was in relatively good shape for being 80 years old. Now here's the inside of the house. When I showed up uh, to interview for this project, the inside demo had already been done. So they'd already taken down a lot of the plaster that was on the inside of the house. And we get to see the bones or the structure. And here's how the house was built. Um, if you look at the foreground there, what you're seeing on the horizontal is the outside sheathing for the house. So this house had um, some type of one by six, one by eight shiplap sheathing, true pine, and then the studs, it was a two by four framed house, and then another layer of shiplap sheathing on the inside. And this is not Chip and Joanna shiplap, this is real deal shiplap here, and even shiplap on the ceilings as well. So truly a solid wood structure. You also notice there was no insulation in any of these bays. The house was totally uninsulated. I love this shot too. You can kind of see this big living room section on the house. It had hardwood floors, but then everything else you're seeing in, in the uh, photo is all pine. Okay, now let's take a closer look at one of the windows. Now in this picture, you can see here that those steel windows were rusted out pretty good. They, they uh, really hadn't been maintained in a long time or painted in a long time. But look at that two by four sill underneath that window. You're seeing a little bit of black staining, especially around where the nails were. You can see those, those two nail holes right there. Um, you can see some of those black stains. That's where water uh, had probably gotten through the window and had stained that bottom sill. But what's absent? There's no rot. There's really no mold to speak of as well in this house. Solid wood house. That window leaked. The solid two by fours were able to absorb that water and there was no insulation in there, so there was probably a fair amount of airflow, and certainly there was plenty of heat flow through this building as well. Uh, a little closer look at that. Again, you can see that window uh, probably was taking on a lot of moisture. We had a lot of rust shown on those steel windows, but the two by fours, fantastic shape. This old 80-year-old stucco building absorbed a lot of water every time it rained. It had no overhangs. It had no umbrellas. I like to call overhangs on the house to shed the water. That cladding, that stucco was absorbing the water, but the structure had a lot of ability to absorb that water as well. Uh, this image I, I recreated, but I basically stole this uh, from my friend, Dr. John Straub at RDH, a building science company. I've, I've seen him give this demonstration before, so thank you, Dr. Straub, for allowing me to use this. But basically, Think about that house as that pitcher on the right. That wood structure, as water came in the form of rainwater or leaks or even a plumbing leak, let's say, and started filling that pitcher, that house had the ability to absorb a lot of water, a lot of, you know, just a ton of solid wood in that house. 
And how would that house dry? Well, it would dry from airflow. There was probably a fair amount of leakage in this house. This was certainly built long before codes dictated uh, that we have an airtight envelope. And so it was able to dry over time, and that's where that water's leaking out of that pitcher. But look at that weight, the counterweight on the left-hand side of the scale here. The house had a giant counterweight. Uh, the geeky term for that is hygric buffer capacity. The solid wood two by fours, the solid wood sheathing, they had a lot of ability to soak up moisture. In fact, I've heard um, another famous building scientist, uh, Dr. Stebrook say, that houses of this vintage might be able to soak up 100 or 200 or 300 pounds of water before they reach their capacity. Because think about that house as a big sponge. And stucco on the outside is a leaky cladding. Water will get through it. It's kind of like a sidewalk on the house, but it's also going to absorb a lot and hold that water up against the house. Okay, we're going to come back to this image in a minute, but uh, remember this one as we get to another house. Now let's fast forward to another a new house, and this is actually not a house. Um, this is actually a restaurant, and here's an image after the remodel, but I'm going to show you some images prior to this remodel. Similar building and, and kind of general architectural style, uh, no disrespect to the architects watching this. I'm certainly not a trained architect, but what I'm seeing here is uh, you know, no overhangs, a big stucco square box, um, maybe an overhang over the front door, but other than that, that stucco uh, is getting soaked every time it rains. Now this is post remodel. I don't have an image of this building before, but uh, these images were taken uh, at a location not far from me here in Austin where I saw this remodel happening. I love seeing scaffold and remodels. And from a distance, you can already tell, hey, what's going on there? That plywood looks like it's had some weather on it. Now, this is a stucco uh, building. It was built, I think, in the uh, early 2000s or so, so not even a 20-year-old building. Pretty new construction techniques. But as I got closer to looking at this building, I couldn't believe what I, what I was seeing. Just massive amounts of rot and failure. Now what's going on? 80 year old building with stucco that was in great shape, 20 year old building with stucco that's in terrible shape. We're gonna, we're gonna show you in a minute. This image I think really captures a ton of what's going on here. This is uh, at the base of the, uh, of the house here. This is uh, again two by four construction. Real plywood on the outside, which you generally think of as a good thing. But this whole section here was just so rotted through that as the demo contractor was pulling that stucco off, and you can see it just to the left of that vent pipe there, there's the, some of that original stucco. As he was pulling it off, the sheeting was absolutely rotted. It was just garbage at this point. Now let's pull back and see what we see in this area. Now this is, this is just a few feet back from where I took the last picture. Look at that gray pipe. You know what that gray pipe is? That's a sprinkler head. Now, I'm in Austin, Texas. We have about 30-some inches of annual rainfall, not nearly as much as my friends in the Pacific Northwest, but what we have here that's a problem for our buildings is we have irrigation. And my guess is that sprinkler pipe uh, was probably wetting the building in the middle of the night, uh, maybe three or four days a week, absolutely soaking that traditional three-coat stucco. And we're going to see why in a minute, but it was basically overwhelming the weather barrier in this house. Now you can start to get a feel for it on this photo on the right hand side just above that pipe you can see that some of that black paper there. This house was built with very traditional stucco techniques. Uh, this is on the back of the building. You can see the plywood on the left. Then you're seeing two layers of some asphalt impregnated tar paper. Not exactly sure um, brand or, uh, or type. This is probably something like uh, two layers of number 15 asphalt impregnated tar paper. And then traditional three-coat stucco on top of that. And what happened on this building was it got overwhelmed. It was getting overwhelmed because there was leaks to the building at the uh, ceiling, or pardon me, at the uh, roof line, leaking through the parapet cap. It had leaks around some of the windows and doors. And it had overwhelming amounts of water at sprinkler heads. Now here's the parapet cap on this building. Uh, and as I climbed up uh, and checked that out, just massive amounts of rot at the top of the building where that water was falling down from the sky and landing and soaking it. It was just in terrible shape. Now, what's the deal? Both these buildings are similar. We had no overhangs. Um, we had some leaks clearly in both buildings. They both had traditional three-coat stucco. 
Uh, I wasn't able to show you, but the, uh, the first house, the bone house, had two layers of asphalt impregnated tar paper. And then it had the lath, the scratch, and the brown uh, coat, or pardon me, in the final coat. So it had traditional three coat stucco. But what was different here? The building on the left is the, uh, is the bone house that we showed you. 80 years later, it still looked fantastic with its stucco finish. The building on the right, this is not the same one as we saw because that was a plywood house, but this is pretty typical of new construction. In fact, that's a house I built quite a few years ago. What are you seeing there? A lot of man-made materials, OSB and plywood. OSB and plywood have much, much less capacity to absorb before a failure happens. Uh, I use OSB on some of my houses, not every time, but uh, detractors from OSB like to call it vertical mulch. If OSB gets wet and continually wetted on a new building without airflow and without heat flow through the assembly, it's going to turn into vertical mulch. It's going to disintegrate on you. And that means you're going to have some massive failures. So the building on the left, lots of drying potential, lots of heat flow. The building on the right, really any new construction job, not a lot of drying potential, not a lot of airflow. Even the people that say houses need to breathe, there's not enough breathing in a standard code build house to dry out that assembly when it gets wet. And you can't build a house without insulation, so there's gonna be plenty of heat flow, uh, or pardon me, in an old house there's plenty of heat flow, but in a new house there is not heat flow to dry out those assemblies if they get wet. So now let's go back to that same analogy uh, from Dr. Straub. New construction is more like this photo here. We've got a very small amount of capacity on that, uh, on that cup there, even just some drops of water and maybe even a little bit of drying is gonna tip the balances because we've got a much smaller counterweight in these newer houses. We don't have the ability to dry and to drain and to, um, to heat through those buildings. So what are the lessons from, from these two houses? One house, 80 years old, looked amazing. One house, 20 years old, terrible condition, absolute failure. Well, the first thing we need to learn is that stucco leaks. Stucco is a leaky cladding. There's no amount of paint on the outside or caulking that's gonna keep the moisture from getting through the stucco, especially as you have a uh, more exposed building, new construction, modern uh, architecture, no overhangs, or even that much more water that it's gonna absorb. The other big takeaway here is that houses today are sensitive. Even a small amount of leakage is gonna tip the balance and is gonna kill the house. I think the third thing that we need to learn from this is that we can't rely on old methods of stucco when we're building to today's standards. When we build to today's standards with, with newer codes and with insulation, we're not gonna be able to use those old methods. We need to go to newer methods. I love this quote from David Nicastro, if it can't dry, it's gonna die. Let me uh, take a minute and let's talk about another couple things here. Now we've only mentioned houses with no overhangs, but what happens if you have some overhang or maybe you have a flat roof, but you have a little bit of projection on the roof? I love this slide. I, I, uh, I took this from one of Dr. Straub's presentations as well. If you have a light rain that's there on the left and um, you've got an overhang with a more traditional pitched roof, that's the upper left image you see there. Look how the wall doesn't even get wet. The roof, even with a little one foot overhang, is not getting wet. On the other hand, with a flat roof, without that wind foil of the pitch of the roof, a little bit of an overhang but a flat roof means that we're gonna get wet very tall onto the wall. And that's what happens also with no overhangs with those modern buildings. Okay, now look at the second image. We've got a little heavier rain, a one millimeter drop, and we've got a little bit of wind now. Now, the second image down there, we're nearly getting wet to the soffit, the second image on the bottom. Look at that thing. It's, it's getting water almost all the way up to the soffit area. Not good. And on the pitched roof, still we're not getting the wall wet. Only we, when we have a deluge with some wind are we getting wet on the house with the overhang, which means that on most rainstorms, we're not getting super wet. Whereas the house with an overhang but a flat roof, whether it's a light rain or whether it's a heavy rain, a deluge, that building is getting wet. And so we need to take special care with those buildings, especially the no overhang buildings. This came from Building Science Corporation, uh, Joe, uh, Dr. Stebrick uh, and his colleagues. 
Uh, this is, I believe, from a Canadian study of houses. And look at the houses that have no overhang and how much problems were found in those houses on this Canadian study versus the houses with big overhangs, 24 inches, very, very few problems compared to the houses with no overhangs. All right, guys, I'm gonna close with this quote here from Dr. Stebrick, but stay tuned for the next build show. I'm gonna go into a few different assemblies, kind of a good, better, best on what will work if you're doing stucco. Um, I think you're gonna like this presentation, but think about uh, what we talked about today. And if you've got any comments from houses you've remodeled, I'd love for you to comment below uh, so that I can hear from you on this. Guys, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Hit that subscribe button. New content every Tuesday and Friday. Otherwise, I'll see you next time on The Build Show.